American soccer fans, welcome to episode 120 of the USA Soccer Cast. We are bringing you everything about the U.S. national teams, the players, the leagues, and everything else that impacts the game of soccer in these United States. I'm Donald Wine. It is Monday, November 6th, 2023. And uh, wow, it, it sounds like we have a new women's national team head coach. And that coach is Emma Hayes. In my mind, the greatest women's soccer coach in the world. Last week on this show, we had discussed three names that had been publicly leaked as finalists for the U.S. Women's National Team head coach position. Australia coach Tony Gustafson, O.L. Rain coach Laura Harvey, and Juventus coach Joe Montemuro. Well, not sure if they were publicly leaked to throw everyone off the scent or if something happened between last week and now, but we had the bombshell news come through over the weekend on Saturday morning that it was going to be Emma Hayes. And let's talk about how it all came to pass moments after Chelsea women beat Aston Villa six, nothing on Saturday morning, the club announced that Hayes would leave at the end of the season for a new opportunity outside of the women's super league and club football. It was a shocking announcement. People were wondering why this announcement was made immediately after such a blowout win and in week five of the WSL season. But then people started speculating about what job she could take. And some people were saying it would be England, maybe Spain. A couple people had floated the possibility of it being the United States. But the timing that we knew of at the time was off. U.S. Soccer Sporting Director Matt Crocker had stated that they wanted to have the coach in place by the upcoming December international window so that we can start full preparations for a busy 2024 schedule that includes the W Gold Cup and the Olympics. Twyla Kilgore had been coaching the team on an interim basis since Vlako Andonovsky resigned following the Women's World Cup. So for a lot of people, and I was in this camp at the time, the timing felt off and it didn't seem like the United States would be the next destination for Emma Hayes. Well, very soon, Joseph Lowry of Backhield broke the story that Emma Hayes was leaving Chelsea to become the U.S. Women's National Team new head coach, which was very quickly confirmed by Equalizer Soccer and then later ESPN and The Athletic. And it's unclear what will happen between now and the end of the WSL season in May. It's been reported that Hayes may be working with the Women's National Team in the meantime during international breaks. And then an assistant would take control of the day-to-day in the interim until Hayes is set to fully take over. And there are some that would think that with Hayes not being able to take over in full until late May, early June, depending on how far they advance in Women's Champions League, U.S. soccer is kind of punting on those big tournaments next year. Hayes would not take over till about two months before the Olympics begin in Paris. However, it's clear that Matt Cracker has kind of said, we're willing to wait and make those sacrifices to get the right coach. And U.S. Soccer's board of directors reportedly approved the move late Saturday afternoon, and her salary is expected to make her the highest paid women's national team coach in world history. Record-breaking is the air quotes that was used. And she would deserve that. When it comes to Emma Hayes, her accolades list is as long as a summer's day. Her coaching career started with the Long Island Lady Riders, then of the USLW League. That's all the way back in 2001. I believe she was not even 25 years old when she started coaching. She coached there two seasons. She moved to Iona for three seasons. And then in 2006, she moved to Arsenal to serve as a first team assistant and then the academy director. In 2008, she came back to America to coach the Chicago Red Stars, which was then in the WPS. She was there till 2010, where she served as technical director for the Western New York Flash, who won the WP, who won the WPS title in 2011. She then went to the Washington Freedom for a year as a consultant before taking over at Chelsea in 2012. So she's very familiar with American soccer. She said on many occasions that her experience in America helped shape her career. She said to Chelsea TV once that despite the fact that she was born in England, she, quote, definitely was made in America, end quote. However, moving to Chelsea is where she became the best women's soccer coach in the world, in my opinion. She's won six WSL titles, including the last four in a row. She's won five FA Cups, two League Cups, and a Community Shield. She also led Chelsea to the Women's Champions League final this past season, losing to Barcelona. Individually, she was 
FIFA's the best football coach in 2021. She won the WSL Manager of the Season Award six times. She's in the WSL Hall of Fame, inducted in 2021. She also is a member and officer of the British Empire. Very few coaches have accomplished what she has on the club level, and that alone should excite American fans about the future of the women's national team. And the main thing this signals to me is that U.S. soccer is serious about changing how the program operates, and they're serious about embracing the changes necessary to return to the top. Bringing in Emma Hayes shows their commitment to getting back on track and hopefully will allow her the control necessary to do that. We're going to pause for a quick break. Next up, we discuss Emma Hayes' tactics and style of coaching and what we could see from the women's national team with her in charge. So stick around. Hey, everyone, are you looking for the latest gear for your U.S. national teams, Major League Soccer, the NWSL, or any other team in the world of soccer? The USA Soccer Cast has affiliate partnerships that are ready to help you out. Head to linktree.com slash USA Soccer Cast, where we have links to Homage, Fanatics, the MLS Store, and Breaking Team. You can get the jersey, shirt, hat, or accessory you're looking for to support your team while also saving some money in helping this show in the process. Again, linktree.com slash USA Soccer Cast. Click on the links and get your gear. And we thank you as always for your support of the show. We're back, and as we mentioned before the break, Emma Hayes is expected to be named as the U.S. Women's National Team head coach, and I am super excited about this, as are a lot of fans. And we're going to get into some of what excites so many people about Emma Hayes coming to coach the national team, her coaching style and philosophy, as well as her tactics. And Sophie Lawson wrote a great article over at ESPN, a big fan of her work, and the article focused on describing to women's national team fans, what they are getting in coach Emma Hayes and what they can look forward to on the field. And let's start with how her teams tend to play. Initially, she put the emphasis on clean sheets and attacking from the back. And more recently, she's shifted that focus to defending from the front and being aggressive on the ball. One of the best things about Hayes is that she's a coach that identifies what her players can naturally do well and put them in formations and positions that allow that to permeate. The team comes together, everyone playing in natural ways while still embracing the philosophy of being aggressive as a unit, pressuring the ball and forcing turnover so that they can capitalize on them. Lawson writes that one of the standards of Chelsea under Emma Hayes is that they, quote, routinely looked like they had a numerical advantage. And that's what I see a lot when Chelsea plays. They swarm the ball. They don't like giving their opponent any room to breathe. And it always feels like they're playing 11 v 10 or 11 v 9 because the other team really gets frustrated quickly by always seemingly having two to three Chelsea players near the ball. That forces them to play right into Chelsea's strengths and turn the ball over. And when Chelsea has the ball, look out. It's clinical while stylistically looking magnificent. Now, Hayes will also want her team to really flow forward so it feels like the shot can come from anywhere. When they're in the attack in third, it feels like Chelsea has like eight to nine players moving forward. And it forces everyone on the opponent's side to come back to defend the ball. They're also clinical with finishing. They're also clinical with finishing, and they don't let up. Hayes has what I love, an eye for young talent. And that stems from her time as academy director at Arsenal. She recently brought in Katarina Macario, who has not yet played for Chelsea because she's still recovering from that ACL injury. And she brought in Mia Fischel over the summer. And Mia Fischel, who had been balling at Tigres and League MX, had not really been considered for the U.S. Women's National Team because of it. Bringing her here to Chelsea, Fischel has immediately been elevated to the national team where she scored her first goal in San Diego a little over a week ago. Hayes is also familiar with Crystal Dunn. She played for Hayes at Chelsea for a season and a half. And Hayes used Dunn as a wingback, mostly out of a three defensive back set. And it kind of helped shape Dunn from a forward into the best left back in the world, a left back that can move forward and use her creative abilities to set up the offense. So Hayes has always had an eye for talent and she's always been scouting some of the young players that could be a part of the core 
of the national team moving forward. Hayes also recently wrote some thoughts on the women's national team. And it's interesting that these thoughts were posted after the women's world cup and what the women's national team, the U S should consider doing after they crashed out in the round of 16. And it's interesting reading then what she wrote then and applying it to now when she might be taking over the team. And she writes, quote, there's still a huge amount of talent in this U.S. team, but with so many of the squad playing solely in the NWSL, it doesn't offer enough diversity to their squad in terms of playing against different styles. Here in Europe, where you're playing in different competitions, Champions Leagues or Cups, players aren't going to be phased by other things because they come up against different football week in, week out, end quote. She then went on to say, quote, overall, I think America are massively short of creative talent. When you're playing against more well-organized teams, better coach teams, you have to break them down. And that breaking teams down is a combination of strategy, tactics, and personnel. And I don't see that they have the personnel to do that. So thinking about what she wrote, overall, she wants versatility. She wants her teams to be uncomfortable playing against an array of different styles so that when it comes to crunch time, they'll be comfortable if they see anything. Will this mean you'll see a ton of U.S. players moving to Europe with their next club contracts? I'm not entirely sure about that. The NWSL, in my mind, is still the best league in the world where the best have come to play. But you'll probably see some players head to Europe in the next few years. And within the higher-ups of the NWSL and U.S. soccer, that hopefully means a push to get more competitions in place to help the league thrive and for players to play different styles in high-profile competitions. We're talking about a U.S. Open Cup a CONCACAF Champions League, those sort of tournaments. On the national team level, it could mean a change in who the team plays and where they play. The teams that they struggle against, Sweden, England, Australia, Spain, Germany, we could be seeing them more. I think that would also mean that diversity in who we play and how we play them should mean that the United States plays more games on the road instead of trying to bring more teams to the United States. At least, I hope so. Part of developing a squad that can handle different styles of play also includes learning how to operate in hostile environments. And we should have more games against Sweden and Sweden, against England at Wembley, head to the office to play Jamaica, head to South America to take on Brazil or Colombia, head to Australia, go to Japan or South Korea. I, I personally think it would be cool for the United States to play on every continent at least once during a four-year World Cup cycle. Not just because it would be fun for me to travel and for a lot of our friends to travel to watch the women's national team play on the road, but to prepare for World Cups, you need to embrace the fact that walking into every stadium at that World Cup, short of it being here in the United States, you may be entering an atmosphere that wants to see you lose, no matter how many tens of thousands of Americans make the trip. I'd love to see what Emma thinks of the prospects of having fewer home games for the United States. The women's national team between the end of the 2019 women's world cup and the start of the 2023 tournament played 50 friendlies. And that includes she believes cups. Only nine of them took place outside the United States. So Emma may look to change that. And finally, it's clear that Emma never wants to be outcoached ever. And I love that part. She's going to want to tactically approach each match knowing she has the pick of some of the best players in the world, and she will not have a team falter because she was not prepared to face the other team and their coaching staff. She's going to develop a winning strategy. She does that time and time again. She places players in the positions that will make them the most successful and will have them playing hard and together as a team. She's going to play the kids, and she's going to get our team younger, hungrier, and make it where no spots are given. I can't wait for that. So shout out to Sophie Lawson for that awesome article and deep dive. I learned a lot by reading it and I will link to it on the show notes as well as the article that we place about this episode at Stars and Stripes FC. The official announcement from U.S. Soccer of the hiring of Emma Hayes has not yet happened, but I think we all expect it to happen this week so that we can figure out how the next few months work for the program. But this is incredible news and I know I'm super excited And a lot of people are super excited that Emma Hayes seems to be set to coach the United States women's national team for this next cycle. That will do it for episode 120 of the USA soccer cast. Thank you so much for listening. Remember follow us on Twitter. We are at USA soccer cast. Don't forget 
We have an affiliate program with Homage, Fanatics, MLS Store, and Breaking Tea. You can head to linktree.com slash USA Soccercast to learn more. Click the links to those sites and support the show while getting the latest gear. And please send us some topic suggestions as we move forward. You can email them to usasoccercast at gmail.com or you can tag us in your questions on Twitter. We'll talk to you again soon, y'all. Peace.